Hey social bosses, welcome back to another marketing masterclass. And in this week's marketing masterclass, I am talking about what the fitness industry taught me about business and marketing. So what did the fitness industry teach me or what did I learn from being in the fitness industry for over 15 years? So most of you that don't know, my background, if you're new to who I am, I'm Jay Franco, known across all of social media as the profitable social boss. And I help entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, coaches, consultants, service providers to build and market a profitable online business. Now, for those of you that know me now as that role, you don't know that years ago, I was actually in the fitness industry for at least 15 years, if not more, if not maybe about 20 years. And in the fitness industry, I had several roles. I started off as a personal trainer, then I started off doing meal prep, and then I had a boyfriend who wanted to compete. So I, you know, uh, studied to get my nutrition certification, got him on that and on his first stage. And through that, I found my passion of doing makeup for competitors. And throughout all of that, I was just enamored by the entire industry. And I literally elevated myself to one of the most sought after makeup artists in the industry to the fact that even now, I still get emails about people asking me if I'm doing a specific show, if I'm going to be there providing makeup services with me and my team. I grew my team so big and it was through marketing and it was through acquiring freelancers to travel with me all over the United States, literally like all over across the world, uh, legit across the world, Brazil and everywhere else. And I had my team and I built an incredible team. But throughout the process, I learned some things, some key things about these competitors that I became friends with and that let me into their personal and private lives. Not only that, but I saw their trajectory as an athlete. And one of the number one things that I learned about business and marketing from the fitness industry is that the athletes that were the most successful and the athletes that were on top, you're talking about the top five Olympians, you're talking about girls placing and qualifying for the Olympia and for the Arnold Classic, these girls and these athletes all had a coach. Number one thing that I learned in business and marketing is that you've got to have a coach. A coach will help you take you to new levels, will guide you, handhold and guide you to the next level in your uh, career, in your business journey. A coach will open doors and facilitate the growth process that you need to take and will introduce you to the right trajectory that you need to take so that you can experience new levels. I noticed that the girls that were doing everything on their own just never got anywhere. Then here's the kicker, guys. Here's the kicker. Those same girls that didn't have coaches were the first ones to complain that a, oh, it's so political. It's so political. It's who's your coach and who you know and and who and 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 how many judges you know and all that stuff. It's so political. But it's funny because they still needed a lot of work in their physiques. They still needed a lot of dialing in, and they needed someone subjectively looking at them from the outside to develop strategies for them to take them to the next level. It's very similar in marketing. In marketing, you can do all the things by yourself in your own business, specifically marketing and social media. You can do all of those things by yourself, but the minute that you get a strategist or a marketing coach and you start learning how to do it correctly, you start seeing more leads being generated. You start seeing new levels in your business open up. It was exactly the same thing that I saw in the fitness industry. In the fitness industry, the girls that did it themselves, that did their own makeup, their own hair, their own training, their own dieting, their own dialing in themselves for competitions, those were the girls that were the bottom of the barrel. Now, every once in 
a while, you saw this like unicorn stand out where some little homegrown girl had done everything herself from her makeup, her shoes, her everything, her bikini, everything. And she happened to be a unicorn. And that's where every single coach just wanted a vulture on that poor innocent soul and literally like snatch her up and say, I want you part of my team because I could take you to that next level. Yes, there are businesses out there that when you start this concept or this novel idea, right, uh, you will come across being a unicorn. If you're a coach, there's a million life coaches out there. A million life coaches. There's a million finance coaches. There's a million of everything. But once in a while, you find someone that decides to niche completely in a very unique way and in to an audience that is completely undeserved and not only that, but ignored. And all of a sudden, you've got this unicorn that appears out of nowhere and and you're like, wow, that person has had exponential growth in their business. It could have been their product. It could have been some novel idea. It could have been a niche that they discovered that was underserved and, and literally like people weren't even, didn't even care about these people. It could be any of those factors that created a unicorn in the business sphere and caused this business to rise faster than everybody else. It's very similar to athletes where all of a sudden they compete and it's their first competition, but they just have the genetics. They just have the presence, the poise, the everything, the it factor. And they're completely and utterly freaking beautiful. It's the same thing in business, guys. You will find a unicorn. A unicorn can spurt out out of every industry and it's happened. So don't compare yourself to unicorns. Compare yourself to all the other athletes. What did those athletes do to get to where like that ultimate stage for athletes in the bodybuilding industry? It was the Olympia. It was the Olympia stage. And to get there, you had to have a lot of discipline, a lot of endurance, a lot of kicking rocks with your high heels because you will kick rocks for a long time until you start positioning yourself with the right strategies and the right combination of things that start working. But here's the second thing that I learned from the fitness industry that taught me about business and marketing is that you're constantly testing. When you finally start to dial down your physique, and you get the feedback from the judges. They tell you, mm, you need a little bit more glute. You, your tie-ins are too short or you don't have enough tie-ins or sorry, but like you're so chiseled and you're so stringy. Um, you need to like soften up and you need to add you know, volume to yourself or to your look and you need to soften yourself and give yourself an S-curve when you're posing. Those are things that you are tactics, tactics in business and in marketing that you apply to your business to start fine tuning the efficiency of growth in your business. It's the same thing in the fitness industry. In the fitness industry, it's literally dialing in your physique, right? Finding the perfect suit, the right balance of your hair, your makeup, your posing, your walk, your presentation, those are all things that make up strategy. In business and marketing, it's the same thing. It could be which platforms you're using to communicate with your audience, finding the right audience and, and, and understanding your target market, like really getting really honed in, right? Tightening in on your target audience. It could be any of those factors. That's another thing that the fitness industry taught me. A third thing that the fitness industry taught me is that to be on top, I had to have a coach. Meaning that, remember when I was talking about like the unicorns and the homegrown and doing things on your own and not hiring the coach and thinking it's political? It's not the fact that the industry is super political. It's the fact that when you find the right coach, 
A coach can help you grow. A coach will lay out a plan, devise strategies, and not only that, but will often drive those strategies and you just implement and you see the growth. It's the same thing in business and marketing. In marketing, for me, as a marketing strategist, I typically create these high-level strategies from outside looking in, and I make sure that my clients implement and I drive them to implementation so that, that I can see success, so I can see milestones, so that I can see outcome. Then I go back and reanalyze and say, okay, what worked, what didn't work? It's the same thing with a fitness coach. A fitness coach will you know, create a, a nutrition plan, will tweak your presentation, will tweak the way you walk, will tweak your workouts to the point where they dial it in until they see the result that they want to see. On the other hand, what I did learn is that a lot of times athletes would have false expectations that if they went with, let's say, Kim Odo or um, what's his name, Davey, or um, what uh, Bombshell Shannon Day or any of the top coaches, right? If they went with any of the top coaches, they had this false expectation that, oh, well, once I go to Mike Davies or Shannon Day or Kim Odo, I'm immediately going to start placing better. You haven't even gotten a chance to start working with the coach and have the coach implement strategies, and you're already thinking that you're going to be successful. It's the same thing when someone hires a marketing coach or a marketing strategist to come in in their business and work on their business. The thing is here, guys, that you hire us with a false expectation that as soon as you hire us, you're gonna see money. In the first week, you want to see money. And I'm sorry, it takes time to fine tune you, your plan. It takes time to A-B test and understand who you are as a business, learn who you are as a business, Learn your industry, learn your business, learn your market, le learn your ideal clients. It takes us time to really start understanding those things. And we have to test certain strategies to see if they're going to work. Now, we are the strategists, meaning that we know what we're doing. And so we're going to choose the best strategies to start testing so that we can see the best results faster. That doesn't mean that as soon as we implement, you're going to see cha-ching, lots of money. It's just not going to happen. It's the same thing in the fitness industry. Just because I went with some of the top, top, top coaches in the industry, I'm automatically going to get an O card and I'm going to place in the top five at the Olympia. Doesn't work that way, guys. These girls had a lot of hard work and dedication. And the one thing that they did right, this is another thing that I learned from the from the fitness industry. The one thing they did right is they stuck with their coach. That even though when they first started with their coach, they weren't getting the results, the placings that they wanted, they stuck with the coach. They trusted the process. You have to trust the process. When you trust the process, it gives us room to test, it gives us gives you room to grow and it gives you room to mature. As the athlete matures in their physique, then the coach can now really start dialing in and getting really good at that athlete's physique, understanding what things, how their body reacts. Um, there's strategies that they may implement, like, you know, getting extensions, getting boobs, or, you know, getting a different suit, cutting the suit a little differently because this body is just a little different. There's a lot of these things that come to play. And those are the last things that they start tweaking to make sure that they have a winning package. Once they take them to their first show where they win their first pro show and they start consistently placing in the top three at professional shows and they work their way up to the Olympia stage, 
just because you ended up on the Olympia stage doesn't mean that now you're going to be top three in the Olympia or top six in the Olympia. That's, that's not what it means. There are tons of girls that can qualify and you have to compete against all of these girls that have also been working hard. They have been with the same coach consistently. What I did learn is that those that stayed with their coach and let their coach drive them, in other words, get to know their physique and trusted their coach and gave them autonomy, those are the ones that perform the best. Those are the ones that consistently outdid the rest, consistently. It doesn't mean that they won the Olympia 10 times in a row. It means that they consistently outperformed every time, that they continually presented a better physique each and every single time, that they dialed in their strategy every single time. It's the same thing in marketing and in business. You take these examples from the fitness industry and those who work with one coach instead of jumping from one coach to the next coach to the next coach to the next coach, they will always outperform. Business owners who stick to one coach, work with one coach long-term, and let the coach get to know and dial in your industry and your business really well, will outperform someone who's gone from one coach to the next coach to the next coach to the following coach. Let the coach do the work. That was the one thing that I know for a fact I learned from the fitness industry from the very, very beginning from me being in the industry is that those girls that stayed with one coach consistently instead of getting pissed off because they didn't make the cut in the first round or they didn't place top three or they didn't win the show, they didn't get pissed off and fire their coach and ended up with another coach. Those are the girls that were consistently performing. Those are the girls that are still in the game. Those are the girls that even though year after year after year after year has gone by, they're still in the top 10 of the world's greatest athletes in bodybuilding. I have seen it, completely seen it. Look at the Olympia um, bikini competitors. It's just one a, a week or two ago or so, several weeks ago. And those are the girls who have been there consistently. There has been a lot of girls in the O this past year that competed at the O that have consistently showed up, that have used the same coach, that have really developed those strategies. It's the same way in business. In business, hey, sometimes you do you do well and sometimes you know you you hit the mark, but you didn't have this crazy exponential growth like you thought you were, but you hit it. Some of you guys hit it and quit it thinking that going to a di another business, another coach is going to actually get you to the next level. The only thing you're doing is setting yourself back because now this coach has to learn your business all over again from scratch, where this person over here has all the insight that they need to take you to the next level. So those are the three things that I learned from the fitness industry that you can take now and apply to your business, to your journey as an entrepreneur. It's about being consistent. It's about getting a coach. And it's about understanding that you have to bring in all of the strategies. You have to constantly test. You have to be committed to the long-term process to be on top. It's that simple, guys. Stay with your coach. Go grab a coach. Go get one. Stay consistent. Stay on the course. If you need a marketing strategist to help you, to coach you your way to success in marketing, I mean, yes, shameless plug over here. Definitely give me a call. But whoever it is, stay the course. It's not just the same with fitness, with business, with marketing. It's the same with ads as well. Stay the course with ads and you'll see it. You'll be able to fine tune your ad strategy, see what's working, turn off ads that are not, you know, change your audiences, change your graphics, like constantly test to see so that you can start identifying the best performing ads. 
It's the same across anything in life. Stay the course, be okay with doing the work, and stop creating false expectations that once you have a coach or once you have a strategy, that all of a sudden you're going to make things happen and make yourself a millionaire overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day, guys, and neither can your business. Your business cannot be built in a day and your business cannot be dependent on you hiring one coach with one strategy and you didn't even give them the time or the chance for them to understand your business and then now you're going to jump to someone else. So I'm sorry, you cannot be changing architects in the middle of building a foundation. And that's literally it. That's what I learned from the fitness industry. Those are the three concepts that I learned. And I'm telling you, I am so grateful that I was a makeup artist and that I got to see all of this going on in the background. But it taught me some of the best lessons that I'm applying in my business today. I got a coach and I'm sticking with her. And not only that, but I know that my coach is driving my business. I'm giving them the trust and I'm letting go for them to implement those strategies to take me to six, seven, and eight figures because I they've successfully had six, seven, and eight figure businesses and taken businesses to their first million and their first 10 million. So I need to be trusting of those coaches that they know what they're doing to take me to the next level. Am I saying be completely blind and say, do whatever you want? No. What I'm saying is trust the process. It may be a long one. It may be an arduous one. It may be one where you're going to have to have a lot of discipline, but I promise you that the outcome is fabulous. I mean, it's, I've truly enjoyed my time with my coach and I've hired two coaches this year. One was for six months and right one, the other one, the, my main business advisor, she's ongoing. And honestly, for next year, I've literally integrated the cost of my coach into my expenses and I've increased my projected revenue so that I can make sure that I it's paying itself. And I understand that that is one key component of my business that has allowed me to hit six figures again in a very different way, in a way where I'm not constantly hustling, I'm not constantly burned out, and I'm constantly scaling. So hiring my coach was the best thing that I did. You need to hire someone, whether it's a business coach or a marketing strategist, to take you and help you build your business, whatever it is that you're missing, whether it's your financials or your operational, then hire a business coach. If you're struggling with social media, you're not getting leads, you don't have a value ladder set up, you don't have funnels, a sales funnel, a way for your potential ideal clients to go and ease themselves into your offer and a way for you to convert them then you need a marketing strategist. You need someone to help you develop those tactics and strategies, the strategies and those actionable tactics that you need to be profitable this year with every single marketing effort that you do. All right, guys, I'm so glad that I got to share this because a lot of times I don't get to share about my past and I don't get to share about what I used to do in the before I became a marketing strategist. But being in the fitness industry, were some of my most amazing times of my life. I traveled all over the world, created incredible memories, and I have some incredible lifelong friends that I still talk to and that I completely adore and love. And if it wasn't for the fitness industry, I don't think that I would have had the mindset growth and the business perspective that I have now for my own business. Make sure to like and subscribe as I bring you weekly videos to help you build and market a profitable online business on the Profitable Social Boss channel. Thank you so much. And as always, nos vemos la próxima semana.